my dad was a small business owner just starting a small business. And my mother at the time was a teacher. Could they, in those same roles now, buy a house in Denver? Not in Denver, no. no. <laughs> Our lives in this context, the socioeconomic context, would look completely different. And, and that's what I'm seeing in other people's lives. Like I'm seeing teachers and small business owners or artists years ago would have an opportunity to really create upward mobility for their family and that opportunity is gone. I'm curious to know what you think if, if black artists can make a living and thrive and stay uh, in Denver today? What does that look like for black artists? I think it's very difficult. Um, I know some that are making a living in Denver, however, they do not live in Denver. I am one of the, I think a few that live And I don't really make a sustainable income to be an artist. Because that's a business just like anything else. It's a small business. Um, without the help of being represented in galleries where you know that um, collectors will buy your work, a black artist has to work twice as hard as anyone else. I know several Latino artists that are making it. A lot of them are represented. I'm, I'm sure they have the same struggles, but we're on the bottom. How do we change that? We can't change anyone's mind, said. You know, so I don't know the answer to that question. Um, it has to do with inclusion. Everybody needs to be represented in, at the gallery level in the this, in, in this city. But that's not happening. So yeah, I came out here, I worked, I was on food stamps when I was in AmeriCorps, which everybody that's in AmeriCorps is on food stamps. Uh, but then when I was done with my AmeriCorps term, two years later, um, I got a not quite full-time job, and so I needed to get another job. And I was still trying to stay, so I got a job at the Denver Museum of Miniature Dolls and Toys, which is a small tier three SCFD institution. Um, and I was spending most of my time there. And then, I had to get another job. And you were trying to get jobs in a particular area. Yeah, so uh, while I was at Redline, I started working at Clifford Still Museum, which is uh, maybe 10 hours a week as a gallery teacher. And that was a great opportunity. That's a world-class institution. Um, they gave me a lot of professional development, and they paid fairly well, but you don't get many hours. Going with that, I had to get a third job, and I was a personal assistant. I went to school for art. I have a master's degree, which is kind of what you need to get these jobs. I felt like I was doing pretty good, but after just years of doing this and knowing that other people have to do the same thing, you know, not having any days off, working more than 40 hours a week, and still not being able to afford health insurance, not getting benefits from any of my three jobs because I'm not full time, my budget is extremely tight. <laughs> and you live in Denver City? Yeah, I live in uh, Whittier. Okay. Yeah. I have two roommates, um, but still, it's, it can be hard. You know, these institutions, SCFD did a study and they generate about $1.9 billion for Denver's economy. With B? With a B. <laughs> but who, who reaps that? Um, some of the institu I mean, institutions get ticket prices, they get grant money, but a lot of it, you know, there's tourism money. People are coming in, they stay here, they eat here, they wanted things to do, so that drives that. It's also developers. Developers use art as a way to make their places more attractive to live in. And the driving force, the lifeblood of these institutions, the workers yeah. that are driving this are yeah. getting the short end of the stick and can't afford to live here and have to work two and three jobs. Without them, none of it would exist. No. If you don't pay people enough to be able to work, it's going to limit the people who can do the work. It's going to be people who have the support of their family or people who have the support of their spouse or who have considerable savings. And so you end up with a lot of the same type of people working in institutions. And then you're sitting on the other end of that saying, well, we put out a call, we hired 
you know, we put our, you know, our equal hiring practices. Check the boxes yeah, of engagement. Then nobody came. Or no, or they came here or they couldn't stay here because they had to quit. The art sector in Denver creates over $1 billion in revenue. And what I found through just a conversation I had with some amazing uh, women in the industry is that the quality of life for those people that are behind the scenes and in the workforce driving that industry don't have the greatest quality of life. And we've got an opportunity there to be more creative and supportive for those people that are driving the industry by having cooperative housing models, um, accessory dwelling units, things that will make Denver a more livable city for those folks. Uh, we, we can do better with renter protection and renter's rights. And also I think transportation is a key component that will help uh, be sure that the people who are the driving force uh, in our art sector are able to have a really great quality of life in Denver.